So it is 2026 and workflows are evolving very rapidly with new model releases every month. It's very hard to keep track of what are the best practices. So I want to show you what I've been doing to stay on top of things with repo prompt. And I want to show you a little bit about how you can use these tools to really get the most out of your AI agents and get them to really behave in a much deeper, more performant way um, than you would otherwise just using them on their own. So Claude is a great model, but it is not the smartest model. That actually goes to GPT 5.2. However, if you're like me, talking to GPT 5.2 is a little bit, um, it's, not, it's not the best. It doesn't understand me the way that Claude does, um, but I still wanna leverage its intelligence as I work with it. So what I'm going to do is use the RP investigate prompt to look into two crash reports. We have two crash reports in the 1.5.66 folder. They are related to the built-in terminal Swift term. Great. So this is a very minimal prompt. I really try to make repeatable workflows that require very little overhead for me to think about. And these built-in prompts, um, which come if you install the MCP server really quickly with Claude Code, you can just click this button um, and it will add the tools to your Claude Code setup. You can add it to whatever client that is in this list, or you can hit the copy JSON button if you have a client that is not in this list. Um, there's also a CLI if you're an advanced user and don't want to make use of MCP. Um, that is another way to make use of the uh, MCP server tools without installing it. So that's a great tool for you that is actually quite recent. Um, so great, we've we've launched Claude and it's basically doing an initial report. And one thing that it will do very shortly, there we go, is the context builder invocation. So the context builder is, I think, the most important piece of the repo prompt story. Um, and it is a tool that is just so useful in so many places. Um, it's great at the beginning of a context window. It's great if you're deep in a context window and you have another bug, but you don't you don't have that much headroom to spare and you need to kind of get an analysis to solve that issue. Um, it's like an escape hatch for the model to call on for some help uh, that will navigate your repo, find what's important about the, the problem, where, where are the problem files located, package them up for you, and then it hands that package to a reasoning model to an analyze the issue in depth fully from start to finish in its context window. So the planning workflow that we have with Repo Prompt is very different from other you know, planning flows that you might find in other tools. And the key thing about it that's very you know, tricky and, and different is that it actually doesn't use any tool calling for the planning. And the reason for that is that models um, if they're given the right context up front, they can just start reasoning right away. Um, and we give as much space to the reasoning as possible for the model to really get to the depths of it. Um, so this is a very powerful flow. So right, right away we see Codex did an analysis of the problem. Uh, it diagnosed where the issue lies based on the selected files, um, but it didn't try to solve the problem itself. And that's very important because, you know, it allows us to use actually less intelligent models if you want. Um, but in this case, it, it picked, you know, a good amount of tokens, a good, a good amount of context um, with the selected files. It gave an analysis of the architecture um, and, and clarified what the issue is. And then it handed this off to a reasoning model. So we use GPT 5.1 here, uh, sorry, 5.2. Um, and it's basically coming up with a detailed solution to resolve the problem. Um, now, this multi-step flow of, of finding and then planning was all done automatically by the single tool call. Um, and you can see here that it basically found all of this context and basically wrote the prompt. And if I export this, I can actually show you what this looks like. So this is a large prompt, so you can see there's the instructions here. They're all at the bottom here. Um, and then there's a bunch of files uh, inside uh, this, this, uh, this, this prompt. Um, but some files, like this one, are sliced. So this file is quite large, and the model decided, well, actually, only these lines here are actually relevant to the uh, issue at hand. So we won't need to actually include the full scope of it. We'll just include these sliced parts of it. And that allows the context builder to build a really efficient representation of your code base. Uh, so it's a very powerful tool there. And once that whole 
prompt is set. It's actually exportable. So as you say, I copied it here. Um, but what's really cool is actually if I were to just open another terminal here, so I can say Claude um, and I can say export the prompt we have open. Um, and it's able to know how to use the, uh, the, the tools. Um, it can see the prompt and it's able to export this to a file automatically. So great. So it just actually exported the prompt to that file for, for me. Um, that's really great if I want to automate, you know, taking that context and putting it somewhere else. Um, but what I like to do with this, if I were to copy, is just open up GPT 5.2 Pro, hit paste, and then 5.2 Pro can get to work. Um, you know, there are tools to automate browser use at this point with Claude especially. Um, so, you know, you can find ways to automate that pasting if you like, especially now that exporting is possible. Um, but, you know, in this case, we don't really need 5.2 Pro for this research. We're just using it uh, for the demo there. Um, but what's great is that once that Claude uh, actually completed, oh, we actually missed this. Um, so what's cool is um, Claude got the report and it was able to then ask follow-up questions to the model. Uh, so you can see what it started to write. Um, and we can read its exchanges. Um, so this is one of the weird things with RepoPrompt is that it actually provides space for models to interact autonomously. So I didn't have to do anything. Um, and Claude is just quizzing the GPT model uh, on the solution to make sure that it has a full picture for its analysis uh, and is left no, st no stone unturned. Um, so this can keep going a while. I just wanted to show you all, you know, what's happening here. So I don't have to do anything. What's cool is repo prompt lets me observe what's happening. Um, but I can actually just close this off into the background. Um, you don't see this in my window, but it's right at the top of my toolbar and I could reopen it later if I want. Um, the app is a server, um, that can be just left on in the background. Um, so there you go. So that's, that's the, the, the little tour there. Um, I show I want to show you as well, like one of the key things that I like to do is when I'm starting a new feature, I'll type RP build and RP build is a great way to get the models to kind of work together on a key solution and implement it in one pass of the context window. Now, this also works with Codex. Um, I can do RP build as well here and just do the same workflows I just showed you with with Claude. And that's just easy to install by having these commands here um, and running them here. Uh, you just click this and it will add them to the right place. And then those prompts will show up. Claude has them automatically, um, but Codex, you need to manually install them. Now, one last thing I want to show you is I added this nice little setup wizard. Uh, so you can see I actually don't have the optimal model set up. I can just hit start wizard uh, and it will configure everything for me. Set the context builder model, the chat model, and perfect. Um, when you open this, this is your choice for uh, what models the MCP tools will use. So the chat model is going to be set to GPT 5.2 high, um, and the context builder is set to the codex agent with GPT 5.2 medium, which is my recommendation. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you got a little bit of an idea on how to use this. Um, just one last point, you can easily set them up here in the CLIs. Um, just click install and they'll connect automatically if you've got them installed. So the app is able to really efficiently use all of the different uh, installs you have make great use of them and get great results at the end of the day. So that's what matters, results. Um, so hopefully that helps. And if you're a fan of RepoPrompt and you're not on our Discord server, I really recommend you join our Discord server. It's a great community of like-minded builders. A lot of people are starting to get really wild with the automations, especially around the CLI that you can install, which I just referenced here. And also I just wanted to note as well, um, the CLI, has great docs. And what's great with the RepoProm documentation is you can hit copy all and give this to ChatGPT if you want, or you can hit copy on a specific page and talk to your agent or model about the documentation and find how to fit it into your workflow. So you don't have to ask me questions. The docs can hopefully tell the story for you. Uh, great. Hopefully that helps and wish you the best and happy new year to everyone. Thank you.